Hello, a big thank you to all the viewers of our today's Gardena Award 2022. Uh, 2020, yeah, 2022. So we are very happy that all of you are watching because we want to actually do that event um, in Cologne with Spoga Gaffa together. But of course, unfortunately, this year was a difficult year for all of us in which we had to face the reality and we could only help this event remotely. But we're very excited that we were able to put something together and especially with our partners, such as Köln Messe, who has even faced a tougher year than all of us and could not host any event. And he supported us in a great way to make this happening today. What can you expect today from our event? As some of you know, we have started in the last few weeks actually to scout for startups and we had a public process around applying to become the winner of this year's Gardena Award. The main topic was around sustainability and we got over 20 applications from five different countries and we're very glad that all of these startups were actually great companies that deserve to win. We were only able to choose three of them today that are pitching in a bit and around these pitches we put together a great program with some of our partners, some discussions we had and also some inspirational videos for the next 45 till 60 minutes. I'm very happy now to give the word to the Gardena president, Per Astrum, for some welcoming words. Hello and welcome all to Gardena. We would of course have loved to have this event at the Kölnmässe and Spurga Gafa, but this year is different as, as all of we know, and uh, we have to put the health and safety first and as the top priority. Um, maybe it is actually a year like this when it's especially important to look into the future and to look at what that future holds for us in our industry. Uh, and that is what the Gardena Garden Award is all about. It is to find the best ideas, the best startups within our industry, within the garden space and showcase them uh, for us in the industry to be inspired by, but also for the startup communities to be inspired by and, and network and learn from each other. I think we have a great event and three great finalists lined up for today. Uh, you will see that they are quite three startups which are at quite different stages of their startup journey, but they have all centered on sustainability. They have a grand vision, a lot of passion, and I think we will be blown away by their ideas uh, and engagement. So Toby, let's start the show. Thank you, Per. So we're going to start now with Stefan Lorberg, who's the director of Spoga Gafa, which can't be held, unfortunately, this year, but it's going to take place next year in May, and we're very happy to join Mr. Lorberg and his team at the next year's Spoga Gafa. Please, Mr. Lorbeck, hello to Cologne. Thank you very much. The Gardena Garden Award in cooperation with Spoga Garfa the project with special impact and international appeal for the garden lifestyle sector, this in times of digital change. Together with our partner Gardena, we are therefore very much delighted about the numerous top class entries. The digital transformation has also long since entered the gardening industry as the current award trends theme sustainable smart gardening impressively demonstrate. Consumer demand and requirements for sustainable products are constantly increasing and innovations of all kinds are important and useful for the industry. This trend is also reflected in our next year's fair main theme sustainable gardens or Nachhaltige Gärten in German. Whether for the big boxes or the specialized garden center, the garden trade needs exactly such innovations to show all relevant target groups, digital and green go together perfectly. As a partner of the award and as a worldwide communication and added value platform, we are therefore working to promote innovative and sustainable solutions and to offer them an effective stage and better visibility here in Cologne. The three finalists of the award will therefore, each of them, receive a stand space at Spurger Golf for 21 and will present their tremendous ideas to the worldwide green branch. We are convinced that the potential of clever ideas is far from exhausted and are very pleased to be a partner of the ward again in 21 and to be able to physically host it again here in Cologne at Spoga Golfo. So and altogether, never forget Gardenbeck Stronger. 
A powerful message. Thank you, Mr. Yep. Lawback, and thank you to Cologne. Now we have some short keynotes from other partners. We will start with Dr. Peter Wüst. He is from the BHB, which is an organization which represents the do-it-yourself and gardening industry for the Dach region, which is Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. And he's the point of touch for all kind of media, political, and industry relevant issues. He will talk now about the digital impact in the gardening industry, please. Gardening is an industry with huge opportunities driven by technology advancements throughout the world. Digitalization opens the scope of technology in gardening much wider. Today we face new tasks and old questions. Which innovation fits to which customer and when shall we promote these ideas and innovations? Digitalization covers, first of all, the internet of gardening with interconnected gardens and tools. Second, interconnected garden owners and customers. Third, the technology to enable a more sustainable usage of water and energy. And fourth, interconnected trade providers formerly known as retailers, which manage the network of hundreds of millions different questions and solution requests of customers. So, of course, we talk about products and innovations, but we talk also about the growing request for digital solutions, which have to be combined with a human factor and the fun of manual work in our gardens, terraces and balconies. And more than only fun, in an urbanized world, gardening helps fulfilling the human desire to reconnect with nature. Thank you. Our next guest is Rainer Stiernert. Rainer Stiernert is the managing editor for Dene Publishing, which published the DIY magazine. The DIY magazine is one of the biggest industry magazines for stores, retailers, and all relevant players within the gardening industry. He's going to talk now about the trends in the gardening industry, especially from a consumer point of view. We all know the trends dominating the current discussions in the gardening industry. Convenience and easy gardening, cocooning and the green living room, Garden gardening and kitchen garden, and of course, the mega trend of sustainability with its different aspects, for example, biological instead of chemical fertilizers or pest control and insect diversity and so on. What we see now, and this seems to be a strong impact of the Corona pandemic, there's a target group that focuses extremely on these trends, and that's the younger generations. Retailers tell us for years they tried to bring the younger consumers in their stores. And now these young people are there. What exactly are they looking for? On the one hand, they are searching for an analog counterpart to their digital daily life. And on the other hand, as they grew up within a digital world, they want to use the convenient solutions provided by these technologies. That's why I'm convinced that it makes sense to support the development of such solutions. And the Gardena Garden Award is such an opportunity. However, as far as I can judge this question, I would say that in the garden retail industry, there is still some room for improvement. I think that retailers should take this opportunity in a much more proactive way to build up a long lasting relationship to this most interesting target group. Thank you a lot as well. Now we are coming a little bit closer to the actual event. But before we are starting with the startup pitches, I want to show you a video from two amazing ladies from last year, Claudia Nassif and Sylvie Basler from FITA. They won last year Gardena's award. And we asked them, what has happened in this one year since you won actually this award? 
how have you progressed and how this impacted actually your product, your team and your startup. They are both from Berlin, which is kind of one of the European top cities for startups and they have done quite well in the last 12 months. So I'm very happy to say hi to Sylvie and hi to Claudia and please tell us how was this year for you? Hi, I'm Claudia. I'm Sylvie. We're the founders of FITA and the winners of the 2019 Gardena Startup Award. FITA is a Berlin based startup that creates beautiful products for indoor gardening with a digital edge. We want to simplify gardening and connect people to plants. Our first product was an IoT system for house plants. In its most basic version, the FITA Beam is a small plant sensor that helps people to take care for their plants. The sensor measures a range of important plant vitals and communicates via an app what the plant needs. It's like giving plants a voice. As part of last year's Gardena Award, we presented a prototype of our Fita Beam at the Spoga Gafa Fair. Since then, we have received a lot of interest from buyers, potential technology partners, and also from a number of interested investors. So we had a lot of conversations following the fair through which we received a lot of input, especially from the Gardena team. And all of this helped us to refine and improve and finalize our business model, um, as well as our MVP. So we will very soon move into commercial beta testing. And if all things go well, introduce the FITA Beam to the market in spring 2021. So the most important thing that actually came along with the award was the visibility. It was the most valuable aspect of the entire experience. But hey, the money and the garden robot were really cool too. Um, and we really love what Gardena is currently doing in terms of creating a startup network in the garden industry and really enjoy being part of it. Anyhow, we're super excited for the Gardena 2020 award. Good luck to all of you. You're up for an amazing ride if you make it. But when or not, please get in touch. We love to share ideas and experiences with founders from other green businesses. And to Gardena, thanks again, really. Please keep up the good work. Bye. Bye. Thank you both of you, a very amazing team. And for us, it's very important that these startups that participate will stay among our network. And we're really trying to keep the relations up to them and really help them to grow and hopefully grow together. So now we're starting the fun part. We're starting this year's pitches. We're going to start with BioBlind. Who is BioBlind? BioBlind is from Berlin, and such as FIDA. Their CEO is Jan Engel, and he asked himself, why are all these cities so great? His answer you will see now, such as why he thinks he's going to win today the award. Hi, my name is Jan and I have a vision of free oxygen machines for everybody. Based on our working prototypes, I want to introduce our idea to create green cities, a free digital open source DIY toolkit that helps to build your own organic curtains out of your favorite plants. We call the idea BioBlinds, the Green Skyline Initiative. They allow you to impact the world climate in a positive way, to contribute to biodiversity, to add oxygen to your direct environment, and to be honest, you might not even need an air conditioner anymore. BioBlinds are organic curtains for windows, houses, and even skylines meaning bioblinds are kinetic vertical gardens that can be opened like blinds. You could even grow food right in front of your windows and doors. On the one hand, bioblinds should be available for free in a DIY design. And on the other hand, we want to create an exclusive speculative design product. For both visions, we need to do more scientific technical, social, and design research. Therefore, we plan to develop a BioBlinds research cube at the former inner German border. 
As a reference to the 30-year anniversary of the German reunion, we want to construct bioblinds that figuratively transform the former iron curtain into a green curtain and the former watchtower into a community space. Bioblinds translate democratic freedom interactively and with a global appeal. Our crowdfunding aim is to get an indication from you guys. Do you like the idea of green skylines? Do you also want that all people, whether on the countryside or in the urban centers of this world, could build sustainable oxygen machines in front of their windows? Then help us with your funds to reach our goal. Please check out our material for more information. And if any questions come up, get in touch. Please donate and join the Green Skyline Initiative. So now you got a quite well impression of the project and what we did eight months ago. During these eight months, a lot of things happened, of course, and uh, the pandemic uh, took uh, hard uh, effects on all of us. Uh, we spend a lot of time also working on bio blinds, but also, of course, maintaining a life as we all do. Uh, concerning bio blinds, there actually uh, happened, uh, despite the pandemic, a lot of things. Something that is really important here to mention and which motivated us a lot is uh, that the DLG, the Deutsche Landwirtschaftsgesellschaft, named us one of uh, Germany's most innovative urban farming ideas in 2020. And of course, that's amazing. Based on these news, uh, a farmer contacted us from the south of Germany and for him we are now working on the BioBlind second edition. This will be a, an edition not for humans, but actually for cows. Uh, it will be a cow shed edition and uh, as cows are very curious and eat almost everything, they will be done out of roses. So at least the flowers uh, and skeins and plants can protect themselves a little bit. It's actually quite funny because we spend one weekend with the cows and they are licking over each thorn like six or seven times and only eat it the eighth time when there's enough uh, water out of the mouth. We're not only working on roses, bio blinds for cows and cow sheds, but we are also working on bio blinds for edible plants. Here uh, you can see an example uh, which tests one skein um, of kiwi and berries. Uh, this will be the basis of the third BioBlinds edition called kiwi and berry. Yeah. As we really hope that we get more support by politics and industry, uh, we thank you a lot, Gardena, for making this happen. Very powerful message, but there are more companies that won to win the award. Actually, this time it's not a company, it's one man, one company from our neighbor country, France. He is from Paris. His name is Malcolm Hammer. He comes from the city, which is actually last year was getting most of the VC investments in Europe. So there's a quite cool startup scene happening in Paris at the moment. And what is Malcolm Hammer doing? He has the idea of producing compost. He wants to reduce waste and create living soil for the garden out of the kitchen. And how he's going to do it, he's going to show us now. Hi, I'm Malcolm Hammer from Compost Urbain. We are located in Paris. I'm, it's a one-man company and one product company. And I'm going to show you right away what we're doing. At Compost Urbain, we are making silos for households, but our main goal is to uh, minimize the logistics in what we call decentralized composting. This is a kind of very dense area where I uh, conceived my product. I ran my tests in this environment in only tiny kitchens. Um, it's also uh, places where people are asking for more gardens, more uh, vegetal cover, and obviously it's also the places where uh, huge amounts of uh, organic waste are available. So composting seems a good idea. And the question is, is it complicated? 
No, it's not. Uh, everybody knows the, 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 the basics. Uh, you have to have a, a good proportion of greens and browns. You have to mix the, the, the matter. And uh, for us, what is more important is the moisture management. Because 80% of the waste is actually made of water. And what our small improvement here is to um, put the matter in a silo where it forms a kind of spongy uh, environment. Moisture and air can go freely. So in short, our silo is ventilated. It's passive. There is no motor here. But air and moisture can flow easily. And of course, uh, several layers of uh, fabric prevents uh, insects to go in. So with this, less energy is spent. Compost is available everywhere. Everywhere when people have a project to vegetalize their streets, for instance. Um, we don't want people to just rely on a device and click a button. We, we want them to closely um, observe the natural process of compost. Uh, we are manufacturing locally, thanks to several fab labs uh, providing the machines and also uh, upcycling materials. We won a, a prize uh, of the label made in Paris uh, for this um, circular economy um, scheme. So it's all about uh, waste management, but reduced to the bare minimum. And we think uh, community uh, have a, a huge money to save here. What we have today is trucks moving waste. It's what we call 100% logistics. But if people compost at home, we are down to 20. And if they grow some uh, plants and vegetables on this soil, it consumes it. So we are down to 5%. 5% is the minimum that we are bringing uh, to the people those um, brown matters. It's wood waste, uh, light, uh, light wood crates collected in the city and wood chips. But we can go even further with help of the packaging industry when they shift from plastic to uh, compostable uh, matter. Uh, this will provide a kind of implicit logistics. In terms of sustainability, well, the main point is using our silo. Could, I think uh, we think it's the, 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 the most ecologic uh, way to deal with your um, organic waste. The making of the silo, I will just show you now the, the material used. OK, I want to show you the material. Uh, for making this silo. On the plastic side, we have PVC mesh. It's upcycled material. Um, it's reused as is for the, the filter and the main part of the, the cover. The lid itself is made of polyethylene high density. It's collected and remelted by uh, another startup. One collected this and the other uh, is making this, but in the same, um, the same area. Uh, the rest of the plastic used is regular polypropylene, solid for the buckets, and in non-woven bags inside the cylinder. Uh, the cylinder itself is made in uh, aluminium in one piece, uh, perforated, and there is no welding. It's just uh, just assembled uh, like this. It's with it, and that's for the um, outdoor uh, model. For the indoor model, we use uh, wood because it's more in the, in the fashion of interior furniture. OK, third point for uh, sustainability is the, um, the management of our wood waste uh, in carbon capture. Uh, we are going to uh, make uh, charcoal and biochar uh, mix it with compost in order to achieve a very long term uh, carbon capture, but it's uh, only in development right now. On which topics could we collaborate with Gardena? Uh, we can help people to use the uh, gardening, uh, gardening skill for, for the benefit of the community and, and share composted soil as a, a, a common resource. It's a, it's a, um, it's a possibility, uh, but more important is uh, making people uh, uh, care about gardening all year round because composting uh, is managing uh, his waste uh, every day. You are already in the permaculture when you are composting. Uh, 
And uh, another point is maybe um, invent tools for urban gardens. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Malcolm. So now we're coming to the last one out of the three. It's Plantura, actually from our hometown Munich, which is also a startup hotspot within Germany. The team consists out of Felix Dill, Melissa Raubach, and Dominic Katmus. They have a mission to offer a sustainable product for the garden. And what are those? They will tell you now in the video. Hey Gardena, we are the three co-founders of Plantura. I'm Felix. Hi, I'm Melissa. And I'm Dominic. And our vision is to build the contemporary go-to place for gardening to make it more easy and more sustainable. And what that means, we will show you in the office. So come and join us. Join us. And this is our Plantura headquarter here in Munich, where our team brings together all skills and experience to build a sustainable and leading direct-to-consumer brand for gardening. From tech, product, business, as well as content, and of course, gardening expertise, we are bringing together all relevant skills. We are right now 40 plant runner, as we are called ourselves, and are growing like bamboo. Working data-driven is part of our company DNA. In everything we do, we trust on data rather than on gut feeling. We use techniques such as data crawling, natural language processing, and of course, statistical methods to understand our target audience. Based on the results, we are identifying promising products as well as we are creating our minimal information units for our content. With our content platform, we're reaching more than 4 million hobby gardeners each month. But why all this content? Well, we believe that creating continuous touch points throughout the entire year with our target audience is key when it comes to establishing a strong brand. But that's not where we stop. As we have this direct access to our customers and their target audience, we can analyze and identify market trends very early on. And this deep understanding of the customer needs makes it possible that we can put them in the focus of our product development. And our customer satisfaction speaks for itself. Happy customers are the foundation of successful business. But we want to go further because we see the future of gardening more digitally guided. That's why we built with Plantura the digital ecosystem, fostering user experience and advance our physical products with a digital interface. You may ask yourself how we make gardening more sustainable with our products. Back in 2018, we carefully selected our partners, which are leading companies in diverse spaces, for example, soils, fertilizers and biological plant protection. With those, we develop our products based on scientific research. And for instance, this fertilizer is child and pet safe. We entirely get rid of animal waste. It's 100% plant-based and it's safe to use and it also enhances the soil life. We are very proud of our new soil product line. It emits 65% less CO2 as we completely get rid of uh, peat. And by carefully selecting the ingredients, we were also able to get the EcoCert certificate as well as the flower angle certification. And for us, it's really important at Lantura that our products are effective and eco-friendly. And those are two attributes where we do not compromise. In the past three years, we have built up a brand that is authentic and sustainable. Plus, we are able to reach millions of plant lovers across the Dutch region. Our next steps is to grow internationally, grow our digital offering and to become the market leader for sustainable gardening. In our vision, the garden of the future will be more sustainable and more tech enabled, giving everybody a greener thumb. We will be the brand that understands gardening as a whole and we will firmly bind our customers through sustainable products, inspiring content and strong community. We would love to win the Galena Awards 2020. So thanks for watching and see you soon. soon. Thank you, Munich. Thank you, Plantura. I think these were three really amazing startups and it will be a very hard decision for the jury who is going to be the winner in this year's Gardena Award. 
But before we come to the announcement of this year's winner, we want to show two more quick videos. The first one, I mean, we are talking all the time about gardens and garden products and gardening. So we wanted to show an actual garden. Project from an influencer, a garden influencer from Cologne, is called Beatrice Degenhardt. And why are we showing you this? You will see now. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about the concept behind it. So the idea was to create an experimental uh, garden in which we can show solutions being realized in practice. So on the basis of this garden, we concern ourselves with the question uh, of how a garden can be designed sustainably. What is needed? Which resources are to be conserved? What does a zero waste garden have to do with sustainability? So is it even practicable? So we created this uh, garden in cooperation um, with Beatrice Degenhardt, an exciting blogger who's perfectly suited to the garden. Her ideas, her enthusiasm and determination have made this garden after just you know, three weeks um, what we see right now. So together with her and many of our exhibitors, we want to investigate the opportunities and possibilities um, of sustainability in a garden, in such a garden here. So if the garden looks like this after only three weeks of work, we can really look forward um, how this garden will present itself in September. This was back in May. Now we're in September and uh, let's see how the garden looks like now. It has been quite uh, challenging the last past months as the garden was very wild when we uh, came into the garden. Uh, we had to take out a lot of woods of old plants. Uh, they were quite heavy and also to build the terrace and uh, the tiny house was very exhausting and uh, it took a lot of manpower uh, to get that done. I created this garden with the question, is it possible to have a sustainable garden? Uh, what does it need to have a, to make or create a sustainable garden? I spent a lot of time in uh, this garden since April uh, because there were so many uh, things which I had to change. Uh, I took out some old plants which weren't uh, very sustainable um, and we planted, I planted a lot of new sustainable plants. Sustainable uh, plant is a plant, for example, if you go in the kitchen garden, which can be harvested for more times. For example, also plants which uh, come along with um, quite a small amount of water. Saving water and the, the steam water um, is very important, especially in a sustainable garden. So I'm very happy uh, that uh, Gardena as exhibitor supported us with some really great and valuable devices. Uh, when I wrote the concept uh, for this garden, I also made my mind about how to plant, uh, how to plant the, the raised beds. So I took care of uh, the combination of plants so to see which plants get along together quite well. So, for example, it doesn't make sense to plant uh, potatoes and tomatoes in one raised bed uh, because they have the same enemies. Um, so this was also a very important uh, point. A lot of people also ask me uh, what makes a garden sustainable. So for, in my eyes, it is like um, that you have a lot of uh, areas where you can plant uh, vegetables and uh, berries and um, stuff like that. So you should use the garden to plant a lot, to have like small ways and to use the area you have as useful as possible. And also it is quite important to save water, which is a huge part of sustainability in the garden, avoid waste, to reuse uh, stuff. So for example, collecting seeds for the next um, season, I did that with Nasturium, which is really good. I have a lot of seeds. I'm very proud of our so-called milpa beet. There's uh, corn, beans and pumpkins and uh, they all fit together very well and I harvested quite a lot of, of uh, pumpkins and beans and also some corn. And also we created a DIY raised uh, bed out of old wood, also very sustainable. I like the atmosphere in the garden. It is very wild, uh, which shows the sustainability. I like the combination of the wild uh, flowers we have here. 
um, the vegetables. Yeah, and I, I, just the atmosphere I like here. I'm Beatrice Degenhardt, a garden blogger from Cologne. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook and on my blog. A very cool video and I think it's great to see an actual garden because we were talking so much about all these garden products and garden startups and I was glad we were able to see Beatrice. Thanks a lot. Now we come to the last video I promised before we going to come to the announcement. We have Alexander Ma here. He's the founder of Striber. Who is Striber? Striber is a corporate venture builder. What do they do? They kind of connect startups with corporates because they often have similar interests, but it's really, really difficult for them to engage with each other because they have different understandings of how to work and how to talk with each other. And Alexander Ma founded Striber a few years ago and he is very successful in this industry. And he actually says that a crisis like this that we are all facing can also be a huge opportunity. And why this is? He's going to tell you now in his pitch, Built at Bad News. Thank you, Tobias. It's a pleasure to be here. Today, I would like to present you my perspective of what to make out of this current crisis situation. Let me start with taking a corporate's perspective. This is former Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer when he was asked about his view on the new iPhone launch during an interview in 2007. He was laughing. He then argued much about size, relevance. Um, he listed all strategic battlefields he believed Microsoft was very well positioned in, uh, music, email, instant messaging, and so forth. He's very com he was very comfortable about his uh, smartphone strategy. Well, in his defense, 13 years later, uh, it's easy for us to realize now uh, what a dramatic misjudgment this was. But if you look at it from an analyst point of view in 2007, he definitely had all the arguments on his side. What reality teaches us today is that an inside out perspective on strategy without taking the consumer's perspective into account is and not considering a highly dynamic market context is eventually doomed to fail. While Microsoft is still a thriving company, they are certainly not in the smartphone market. The hard truth is that every business model has a finite lifespan. These lifespans are now shrinking faster than ever before. So as executives today, we can see and feel it during our careers. This is something new and this is uh, um, uh, some, something very painful, of course. The average lifespan of a company in the S&P 500 index used to be more than 30 years, not too long ago, and today it's probably more around 20 and is shrinking uh, in the future. In the current crisis, something remarkable is happening on the stock markets. Technology has been slowly gaining trust among investors to outperform more traditional business models in the long run, and this has been the case before the crisis too. You can see um, the technology business models represented as, as the Nasdaq market here um, and the more traditional business models uh, as the FTSE 100 index. After a short crisis shock moment this year in March, investors long term bets are very clearly on the technology side. The basic assumption here is agility equals resilience and tech companies are definitely more agile than their um, more traditional counterparts. We hear many executives today making similar statements uh, as these. And for better or for worse, the crisis is an accelerator of digital transformation. For many corporates, the key question is now, how can we catch up with the missed opportunities of the last years? One could argue that there's also winners in the crisis among more traditional business models. And true, some businesses have accelerated too. Take uh, supermarkets, for instance, they have had some very good months. And again, let's do a reality check on that uh, by looking at stock performance. As an example, on the red line, you can see Ocado, who is a pure online grocery player in the UK. And on the blue line, Sainsbury, uh, who is uh, a traditional competitor of theirs. So while there was in the crisis a lot of business made on in the, in the brick and mortar stores, the stock market is definitely not picking up on this idea. 
Now, if you're a corporate, what's your way out of this? And from my perspective, it's always good to listen to your shareholders. This is a study um, that collects monthly feedbacks from professional investors since the crisis has started. And the situation today is that 89% of investors believe that healthy companies should prioritize business building capabilities, even at the expense of earnings per share. And 71% of those investors believe that companies should actively pursue acquisitions to strengthen their business at today's low valuations. And here you have it. Um, you have more support for corporate innovation than ever before from your shareholders. So let's take the startup's perspective uh, for a moment. Everyone believes that venture capital is tied up at the moment. And you have to cut the venture capitalists some slack. It is a people's business. They are investing in a team as much as they are investing in a business model. And all of a sudden, just imagine, you couldn't meet people anymore and conferences have been canceled. But the big picture is venture capital has been growing strongly in Europe over the past uh, few years. There was just so much catching up to do with the US market and this still holds true. In fact, in the first half year of 2020, venture capital has already had three times the volume of the past of the last pre-crisis situation in the whole of 2008. So I'm leaning myself out of the window here, but I believe it will come back even stronger. During the crisis, there's also an opportunity for startups to gain market share more efficiently. While user growth is unbroken on, on most, uh, most relevant platforms, the advertising market is suffering a budget squeeze. Historically, this always happens in crisis times. This is a window of opportunity to win market share with less competition for eyeballs. However, experts predict that this will be over in 2021. So in my humble opinion, this should be your story to pitch to VCs in order to close your next funding round and invest in your startup's growth story. I'm closing with my conclusion here and my conclusion it's time to build. And of course, uh, I'm not the only one. Uh, so I'm taking the quote of a very well-known gentleman here. For corporates, this means build more startups, buy more startups. Uh, you have your investors back um, and this is a very special situation, so use it. And for startups, this means find a venture capitalist with a vision and one who is fine with video calls or go without. Keep on building and thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Alexander. It's great that all of you today share the same optimism about today and the future and that we're all looking into a bright next year. Now we come to the part that I promised. The jury was coming together this morning prior to our live show now because of technical um, requirements, but they came to a great decision. Who was in the jury, Per Aström and Tobias Körner from Gardena, Stefan Lorberg from the Köln Messe, which you have seen this morning, Anna Hackstein, which comes from the IVG, Andrea Fischer from Schöner Wohn, which is the kind of biggest B2C gardening magazine, Dr. Peter Wüst, DHB, which you also have seen this morning, Rainer Stiernert, DIY magazine, same as him, and Alexander Ma, who is just told us about the opportunities of building a business in bad times. So let's see what the jury came up with. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It would have been great to, of course, meet you all in person, uh, but it's, as, as we all know, a very special year, and, and I think it's right this year to put health and safety first. Also, thank you all for, for uh, participating in uh, the Garena Garden Award jury. My suggestion would be that we, uh, without voting uh, like the mail said, first go round, so to say, the virtual table, so that everyone gets a chance to at least um, reflect a little bit on on the pros and cons of of each um, finalist, and then when we have listened to each other, why not then just again quickly go round the table and vote. So do we have a result? And the winner is 
So let's start with number three. Pierre, please tell us who is number three. They are all winners, but we have to call it. Yes, uh, thank you, Tobias. Um, and maybe just again, a big thank you to uh, the jury. Um, I think it was really an inspiring discussion we had this morning. And it was fascinating how unified we actually are in terms of how we look at the three finalists. Um, and it was also fascinating how close the final vote became. Um, and um, I, I think this is going to be super exciting to reveal now. Um, so let's start with the number three. And uh, the third prize uh, is this. Gardena Gardner Award Trophy and um, a check for 2,000 euros. And the prize goes to, the third prize goes to BioBlinds. Congratulations. And I will read uh, the motivation. A grand vision. Who would not love to live in a city? where gray is replaced with greenery and color. A huge potential in the connection of this product and idea to the health of people, urban farming and city gardening. It will be super exciting to follow the development and evolution of this great vision. We would love to see a simple to install do-it-yourself version. Maybe this is BioBlinds 3.0. Congratulations, BioBlinds. Great. So who is going to be the second winner pair? So the second prize is a slightly larger uh, Gediana trophy and a, a check for 3,000 euros. And uh, the second prize goes to who is also now the runner-up in the 2020 Gardena Garden Award. The second prize goes to Rantura. And the motivation reads, very strong innovation in how they connect and build the consumer experience and online sales. We love the fact that this startup centers clearly on both sustainability and the consumer. Very impressive how they engage and inspire the consumer and build a community with rich content and how they create a clear, certified, sustainable product. Congratulations. So we all know now who is the winner, but please, Pear, explain us why has the jury decided for our French startup to become the winner? Absolutely, Tobias. So the winner is Compost Urban. And uh, the, the jury discussion on this idea was very inspiring. And uh, we believe that there is um, a great consumer need uh, out there for this type of product. We are very impressed by how uh, the whole product is based on sustainability thinking. And since this year's Gardena Garden Award is also focused on sustainability, this had a, a large impact on, on our decision making. Um, we, we also think and love the fact how the founder talks about this product, uh, not just changing how you compost, compost things, but also how it changes many things around the city and around the home, how it addresses waste management processes and, and also food packaging. Um, we also like this startup because it's at an early stage. It has a lot of future endeavors in front of it. And, and we think it's a great and worthy winner of our number one prize uh, and also therefore our largest prize. Um, for, of course, the largest trophy and also 5,000 euros and a smart, get in a smart system uh, robotic. So, 
Congratulations to Compost Urban. Maybe we can uh, connect with uh, Compost Urban uh, and uh, see how they react. So congratulations, Malcolm, for winning the Gerena Garden Award. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to, 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 to see that I uh, raised attention with something uh, as glamorous as compost. Yes. <laughs> and, and how will you celebrate? Oh, I'm, I'm alone in my workshop. Um, I, I will um, certainly do uh, some more compost uh, <laughs> myself a uh, regular day. <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> and and, uh, and then may I ask, what's, how will you invest the money? Um, um, I already have um, the needed machines, but maybe um, buy some raw material in, in bulk amount. Uh, especially the, the recycled plastic. The guys are very, very tense and it's uh, it's more interesting to buy uh, more sheets in one uh, in one set um, because it's the, the product the, the, the customer are, are asking for. Maybe raw materials. So again, congratulations to all the winners, uh, all the finalists. Um, I think um, a super ex exciting uh, finalist lineup um, with quite some sil similarities and also some differences. Um, finally, um, we would like to also announce that uh, Svoga Gaffa uh, via Mr. Lohberger has uh, today uh, uh, also in the jury uh, committee announced that there will be a special sustainability prize. And given that we find that all these three finalists clearly center on sustainability in a very good way, um, it was decided uh, that the prize would be split equal amongst the three. So in addition to the prizes uh, that Gardena has awarded, there will be uh, 500 euros uh, each uh, also from Spoga Gaffa. And uh, maybe even more important for the future of these startups, they are all invited to Spoga Gaffa at the Köln Messe in May next year uh, to have their own booth, uh, a 18 square meter booth, where they can meet the industry um, and uh, get uh, their business uh, rolling. So, with that, a big thank you to all that have participated. A big congratulations to all the winners um, and especially to the number one winner, Compost Urban. Uh, I look forward to meeting you all at the Kölnmesse in May uh, and um, I will for sure try to visit all the three finalists before them. Thank you all.